Seahawks OC Daryl Bevel was very critical of Russell Wilson's performance in the Seahawks 39 to 32 loss to the Cardinals. Here is what he said to Seattle Sports Radio KJR about one of the plays. We had full progression kind of across the board for that one. We had a chance for Tyler Lockett. We had a chance for Doug Baldwin. And basically, Russell said he just missed it. Bevel also singled out other plays where Wilson struggled during the same interview. Skip, mm. what's going on here? Stephen A., shocking criticism from the offensive coordinator of the franchise quarterback. So I'm going to give you my, my armchair psychiatrist theory here. Strictly from a distance, do. okay? I, I don't have any inside info. I'm just sitting back trying to read the tea leaves up in Seattle, and this is what I read. As you know, the one thing you do not do in the National Football League as a head coach or a coordinator is publicly criticize your starting quarterback, your franchise quarterback. It gets you nowhere. It does you no good because we all agree it's the hardest position to play in all of sports, and it's a confidence position. You can criticize your quarterback privately, that's fine, but publicly no good because you tear down the, the confidence that it is required to go from Sunday to Sunday in this doggy dog league that is the National Football League. So my theory is that Darrell Bevel is so concerned, as is his head coach, Pete Carroll, about lingering bitterness, animosity, unrest in that locker room over that last play in the Super Bowl, in which obviously they put the ball in Russell Wilson's hands instead of Beast Mode's hands. You've gone on and on. Worst call in the history of the Super Bowl. And it lingers. It still eats at the psyche of this football team. And they're teetering at four and five. A lot of people picked him to be in the Super Bowl. You picked him to win the Super Bowl. And it's desperate times, desperate measures, as you said in a previous topic. So, theory. Daryl Bevel pulled aside Russell Wilson and said, I'm going to criticize you on the radio. I, I'm going to go after you on the radio because I need to send a message to this team. You are not above criticism because you deserve some criticism for what happened Sunday night against our arch division rival. We blew that game. Maybe he even told Russell. Obviously, some of that is on the defense, but a lot of it's on you. So I'm going to criticize you because we need to clear the air in our locker room and show them, show the defense, that you're going to, to shoulder your, your share of the blame also. That's just a gut feeling. So he goes on a, a, well, you know, a big radio station in Seattle, one that's highly listened to. And he tears him limb from limb. It, it reminded me of Jay Gruden on RG3 last year, when clearly there was method to the madness. Jay just wanted to send the message, he's no good. I, I got to go with my other guy here. And don't you people see what I'm seeing? So he blasts him publicly, just shreds him, his confidence, and whatever faith Redskin Nation might have had left in RG3. This is the reverse of that, because I think he wants to send a message to clear the locker room air in favor of the quarterback and say, we're all on equal footing here. Just my two cents. Your thoughts? Not bad. Not bad at all. I mean, a couple of points in terms of him doing it intentionally, pulling Russell Wilson to the side, letting him know uh, that that's something that he was going to do. I didn't think of that initially. That's not what popped in my head. So I give you a lot of credit for that because you might be right. I don't know. You know I know quite a few players in that locker room. You do. Room. I've spoken to quite a few players in that locker room, you know, over the last year or so, certainly during this season as well. What I would tell you, Skip Bayless, is that when I first saw, I got, I'll give you what I saw, what I thought when I first saw these comments. I said, the nerve of this man. Yep. The nerve of this man. Mm -hmm. After that call in the Super Bowl, <laughs> yeah. you and Pete Carroll, mm -hmm. after... Uh, Marshawn Lynch's mama had to call you out earlier in this year yep. when, when you lost the opener against St. Louis. You know, suddenly Marshawn Lynch can get the ball now. After watching Russell Wilson get sacked 33 times this year so far, Lee the NFL, you got the nerve to talk about him? Let's count the ways. Is it Russell Wilson's fault that they're 18th in total offense? Is it Russell Wilson's fault that they're 20th in scoring? Is it Russell Wilson's fault that they're 21st on third down conversions? Skip Bayless, looking at this number, last, last, this is the Arizona game, because obviously a lot of this is feeding off of the Arizona game, right? We got Jimmy Graham dropping two passes. We got Marshawn Lynch dropping a pass. We have them committing eight penalties on offense. Skip.
five times, five times in, in the game against Arizona last Sunday night, these guys went first and 20 or worse. Mm. They had a first and 20 or worse five times, okay? That's Russell Wilson's fault too? You know, so so I'm like, what, what, you know, what's Darryl Bevel's fault? I understand that Doug Baldwin wants to come to the defense of his offensive coordinator saying he's making the watch the games, he's making the right calls, there are plays there to be made. Absolutely. Russell Wilson can't be absolved from that. He's the quarterback. There is some culpability. But how the hell is the offensive coordinator get a pass? I mean, with your history, uh, and listen, the Legion of Boom, This uh, the identity of this team was about the Legion of Boom on defense and be small. Mm. And in the Super Bowl, you went against Beast Mode. So much so, and then you got the offseason that came along, and then training camp arrived, and you didn't sign Cam Chancellor at the time. To the point where Beast Mode is walking around with a Cam Chancellor, Cam Chancellor jersey on, all right, in support of his compatriot, all right, not to mention the fact that he was threatening to skip the first game, which I reported, because that's how disgusted he was that his man Cam Chancellor wasn't signed. Ultimately, you didn't sign him. You didn't restructure his deal. You didn't get him on board. He decided to end his holdout, come back to the team. There's some residue for that. We understand that. But that's the team. That ain't no excuse for the offense to be struggling the way they was. Whether it's Rawls or Beast Mode, you got Jimmy Graham come added to this offense already. And you still looking like this with these penalties, this level of inconsistency. And not only that, Russell Wilson having minimal protection. You know what I saw against Arizona Skip Bayless? I saw Russell Wilson running for his life half the time because he wasn't getting the level of protection that he needs and that he deserves. To me, that's the only offensive coordinator, too. So if you want to blame and point the finger at Russell Wilson, you might have a point with some plays, mm -hmm. but there is no question the vast onus of it all falls on the shoulder of an offensive coordinator who, as far as I'm concerned, has gotten too much of a pass. The, the, the person, the only person that's been willing to call him out is Marshawn Lynch's mama. Mm. And that's it. And by the way, she wasn't wrong. She was right. Tell me, tell me what did Marshawn Lynch's mama say that was wrong? I mean, if you think about it, I mean, you don't, you don't give him the ball in the Super Bowl, but you give him the ball uh, against yep. St. Louis. You put him in these precarious positions, <laughs> running him into the ground. I mean, what, what is that? Okay. So I, I just look at Barry Bevel. I'm not, I'm not sold on him. I think he got a lot of nerves calling out Russell Wilson, but all of that doesn't matter if Skip Bayless is right mm -hmm. that he pulled Russell Wilson to the side yep. and said, this is a mechanism I'm going to use. I won't say anything then, but that's the only excuse he has for calling Russell Wilson out If he out gave like him this. that heads up. And if you're if right. If he gave him that heads up. If there's no hidden agenda here, mm -hmm. except Daryl Bevel protecting Daryl Bevel, this man, he's not just on a hot seat, it's on fire. Yeah. He's not going to last Burn much it. longer. Right. Yeah, I, I'm with That's you. Right. Burning up there in the Pacific Northwest. Right. All right, moving on. Will Payne Manning step back on the field this year? Right now, he's out of the lineup and uninvolved as the Broncos prep for Chi-Town. Can Brock Osweiler get Denver back on track?